Hi guys! Today I wanted to do a video focusing on makeup techniques that have really changed the game for me. I feel like the longer I wear makeup, the more I really start to hone in on what I think looks good on me. I do feel like for a long time, I guess I wasn't as focused on the final result of my makeup, but I think now my ultimate goal with makeup is to enjoy the way I look when my makeup is finished. I think I used to be so focused on like the individual products, almost in like a consumeristic way of like pulling together a bunch of products that I like and then putting them on and expecting the final result to look good, but now it's more about what actually looks good when it's all said and done. So I just want to share some tips that I have implemented in my own makeup routine that have really helped me. I do my makeup completely differently from how I did it even two years ago. So my first tip actually happens before the makeup even goes on, but it's also I think one of the most important parts of a makeup routine and that's skin prep. This is gonna be a recurring theme in this video, but my motto is less is more, especially when it comes to skin prep and morning skincare. I firmly believe that the fewer layers of stuff you have on your face before the makeup goes on, the better. So this morning, I cleansed my face with my favorite prequel cleanser. Then after that, I went in with the Ilia Face Base Milk, which I love this. I kind of hate how much I love this because it's so expensive. I'm going to have to find a more affordable alternative. I kind of want to try the Rode one next. But anyway, I'm like halfway through this. It's essentially a milky toner. They call it a lightweight moisturizer. I'll show you the texture so you can see. It's very, very liquidy, very milky, but it has some nice like thickness to it. I'm just going to put it on my hands. <laughs> I actually love putting facial skincare on my hands, but it has such a nice, just like delicious juicy feeling on the skin. Um, it just really, I don't know, it like plumps up my skin in the morning. It's a great skin prep step. So when I feel like my skin needs more hydration than what my sunscreen will give, I'll use this first. Then I let that sink in and dry completely and then I go in with my sunscreen. Today I used the Purito Daily Soft Touch sunscreen, SPF 50 plus. I like this because it definitely has some thickness to it. I definitely think that this can also stand alone as a moisturizer, but Today I just wanted a little bit extra. So that is my entire skin prep. I'm not doing layers of toners and serums and moisturizers and then sunscreen before I even start applying my makeup because makeup just does not sit well for me when I have on a ton of layers of skincare and my skin gets irritated when I use so many products. So now that my skin is prepped, before I go in with my foundation, I am going to go ahead and apply my brow glue. This is the Ardell brow glue. I am on the hunt for something else because I think this is kind of starting to dry out a little bit, but I love having like a brow laminating glue like this to just really like adhere my brow hairs to my face. So now that those things have had some time to completely sink in and dry down, I usually like to give them at least 10 minutes. So if you're getting ready in the morning, maybe that would be the time to go make coffee. Yeah, very important to let those things sink in because if they're still kind of sitting on top of the skin, it's gonna make foundation not work as well. And then also you really want to make sure that your sunscreen has had enough time to really set up on your skin so that you don't disrupt the SPF. With foundation, my biggest lesson that I've learned is that you really only need to use a little bit of foundation. This is one of my favorite foundations. Um, it's the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. Even though this foundation is really lightweight as it is, I still try and only use half a pump. I used to be a full pump girl and not anymore. I just, honestly, I think that was back from my, I was talking about this in a recent video that I think should already be up. Back when I did a lot of project pans, I would kind of overuse product without even necessarily realizing it. Like I just thought a full pump, that's what you need. Like that's why they have a pump is to tell you how much product to use. But my skin looks so much better with foundation when I just use the smallest amount possible. If I want more coverage that day, then I'll use a fuller coverage foundation and again, just use the smallest amount of that possible. My favorite full coverage foundation is the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It, it's so good. So that's what I'll use if I want higher coverage. Of course, I also like to just take whatever's left on my sponge down my neck. I also make sure to blend all the way over here. I don't actually put it on my ears. I don't know. I just don't want makeup on my ears. Ugh. Um, but I do take it just like right up to the edge of my face. I used to like forget to do that. And sometimes I would have like a line right here. But yeah, I try to really blend all the way across the face. Okay, 
I love the way that looks. You can definitely still see my skin showing through, but this is a very light coverage foundation. But I like it because it doesn't look like I have foundation on, and that's really the goal. Like, I really don't want to look like I'm wearing foundation. I don't want it to be obvious. So next for under eye concealer, this is tricky because we all have fine lines on our under eyes. Like, no matter how old you are, you, you probably have some fine lines. So again, I try to use the smallest amount possible. Um, my favorite concealer, as we all know, is the NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer. It comes with a pump. You definitely don't want to use the full pump of this. I just, like, barely touch the pump. Let's see. This might not be quite enough, but when I'm applying my under eye concealer, I apply the dot right here. This is the spot on my under eye that is A, the darkest, and B, has the fewest fine lines. My Most of my fine lines are right underneath my lower lash line, and then I do have some crow's feet starting to show up out here. So I'm focusing the product in the spot where I have the fewest fine lines. And then I like blending that out with a brush. This is like the only brush I will use on my under eyes. It's the BK Beauty a506. This is what they call the kitten paw brush, which is so cute. So this is what I use, and I just tap it out. And I'm really not trying to blend it directly under my lash line, because I'm going to wear eyeshadow, I'm going to wear a little bit of eyeliner, and that area, I just, I'm not worried about really concealing all the way up to the lash line. So I'm really just keeping the concealer down where my dark circle is. I used to be obsessed with full coverage on the under eyes, and I've just kind of accepted that I'm not going to get full coverage. Full coverage just doesn't look great most of the time up close in person. Even the so-called full coverage concealers really don't give you actually full coverage. Like, you're still gonna have a little bit of darkness. I mean, a lot of it is just coming from, like, the shape of my under eyes. Like, I just have hollows right here that are gonna have shadows so you can't take away shadows it just doesn't work that way but what you can do is color correct so the nyx pro fix stick in pink this is one of the only color correctors that i will use on my under eyes i just love it so much your skin tone and the color of your dark circles is going to determine what color of color corrector you want to go for but for me i really like a salmon toned pinky corrector for the under eyes so that's what this color looks like what I love about this color corrector is that it is matte and it actually blurs the skin a little bit, which I think is great for the under eyes. If you have under eye bags or even like hollow under eyes, a blurring matte finish is going to just flatten out the area and really lift it. That's why I love this so much. So many color correctors are just extremely dewy and you might like that, if, especially if you have really dry skin, but I really prefer something more on the matte side, and this is one of the only matte color correctors I know of. And again, I focus this right here on this darkest part of my under eye, right there in that kind of hollow, where my under eye meets the rest of my face. That's where I, that's where I focus it. And I'm going to go ahead and have my powder ready to apply, because that way I'll have my powder on before anything has a chance to crease. So I'm using the e.l.f. Halo Glow Powder in Light Pink to set my under eyes. I love the light pink shade. I also feel like it just helps to color correct a little bit. So I'm just tapping out this corrector. It blends out so quickly. And look at the difference. This is without, and this is with. It really just lifts and brightens so nicely with very minimal product. And then I'm immediately going to set that with my powder. And again, I'm making a point not to really bring this all the way up to the lash line. I'm really just keeping it down here. So that's how I get my under eyes to look as good as possible. Using less product like this also just ensures that it wears way prettier throughout the day. It's not as likely to really settle into those fine lines. It's not as likely to start breaking apart and looking cakey and heavy and crepey. Actually, today I'm going to use powder cheek products. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the rest of my face. I actually really like setting my entire face with powder. Today I'm using the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. I'm really not that picky when it comes to powder, but I do have, I would say, combo skin. So I just like having everything set down so it's not like tacky and sliding around on my face. And I also feel like if I'm wearing powder cheek products, this helps those powder products to blend a little bit more smoothly because they're going on top of a powdery surface rather than like a sticky tacky surface. Today for my powder bronzer, I'm going to use the Fenty. This is my favorite, favorite bronzer. 
I find that a bronzer that is not much deeper than my skin tone looks the best and looks the most flattering on me. It used to be that hardly any bronzers on the market were even this light. Five, six years ago, most of the bronzers on the market were like just a medium orange. <laughs> like that's that was like the standard bronzer shade. Um, so we've come a long way since then. But with this color of bronzer, I don't have to be nearly as careful with how much I'm picking up on my brush. Like I can kind of just go to town and it doesn't look horribly unnatural on my face. I used to take bronzer down my neck, but I I can't do that anymore. I have neck lines and whenever I put bronzer on my neck, it'll like collect in those lines and looks really gross. It's like I have dirt on my neck. So I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I love this bronzer. I even went a little bit heavier handed today than I normally do, but that's okay. Today for blush, I'm actually going to be using these products again on the eyes, so I'm going to keep them out. But for blush today, I'm going to use my Jones Road blush in Sandy. This is such a cute color. For me, blush is all about the brush I use. So for powder blush, I really like this um, BK Beauty 104. It's like a pointed, fluffy brush. I don't like to use something too dense for blush, but it has to be something dense enough that it like can pick up enough product. So I think this is like the perfect happy medium for a blush brush. And I like to keep my blush like right here on really like the highest point of my cheek, which is going to be in a different spot for everybody, but kind of right here is where I like to apply my blush. And then I like this brush because I can kind of just like swirl it around to blend things out. And I'm also not afraid to take my blush across my nose as well. I just think it looks more natural to not only have blush on your cheeks. Sometimes I'll even take some up here, just for a little extra. I do want to wear highlighter today as well. My favorite kind of highlighter is any kind of like really glisteny, wet looking highlight. This one is so beautiful. This is from the brand Spark Cosmetics and it's um, the Camera Ready Cosmetics in-house brand that actually just recently launched. I have been so impressed with this highlighter. I still love using a very fluffy highlighter brush. This is the EcoTools Soft Highlight Brush. This is the best kind of highlight brush in my opinion for giving a diffused look. I don't like to have a stripe on my cheek. I think e.l.f. also makes one or used to make one like this. I don't know if they still sell it, but this is such a nice brush. I really like a lot of EcoTools brushes. This one is really soft. Oh yeah, Spark Cosmetics did give me an affiliate code. I'll put it on the screen. And it's always down, all my affiliate codes are always listed down below in case you ever wanna get some money off. But yeah, look at that. That glow, it just looks so natural. All right, now I'm gonna fill in my brows. I always like using a brow pen. This is the NYX Lipton Snatch Brow Pen in Taupe. My biggest tip for filling in my brows is to have one mirror in front of me. So I have just like a little desk mirror like directly in front of me. And then I'm also holding a small handheld mirror a little bit down below my face. So I can look at both angles. I think I'm just not having a great brow day today, but it's okay. It happens. If I ever get like too much of this product in my brow, I'll just like tap it out with my finger a little bit. I'm really applying very little pressure with this too. I'm just like barely flicking it on there. All right, so now we can get into eyeshadow and I wanted to show how I've been really embracing my natural eye shape a lot more than I used to. I used to want my eyeshadow to be like so lifted and winged out and I've really just been embracing my naturally round eyelids more. So today I'm using my e.l.f. No Budge eyeshadow stick as my base. And I mainly wanted to use this to illustrate how I've been shaping my eyeshadow. So instead of really like winging this out this way, I'm just following the natural shape of my eyelid, which is actually kind of rounded. And I think that's become even more emphasized as I've gotten older. And sometimes I just think embracing your natural eye shape looks the best. So I'm just blending that out with the EcoTools Defined Crease Brush. So if I'm making a line with my finger from like the tail of my brow to the corner of my eye, I really want my eyeshadow to stay confined to this. 
I really don't want it coming out because that's when I think my eye gets kind of dragged down. It really starts with where I place the shadow when I'm just applying it from the stick. And then from there I can blend it. I love this eyeshadow stick so much. Like, that right there is a complete eye look to me. But on a fluffy crease brush, I'm also going to take a little bit of my blush and bronzer. I just tapped back and forth between the two. And then I'm going to blend that through my crease. And I love how this ties the cheeks and eyes together. I'm also going to use this e.l.f. eyeshadow stick as my lower liner. It's perfect for just a smudgy lower liner and just tapping it out with my finger. Then I'm taking a sparkly topper. One of my favorites here is the ColourPop Super Shock in Ritz. And I'm just going to tap a little bit of this in the center of my lid. And I'm going to tap a little bit of it in the center of my lower lash line. I love putting something sparkly right there in the middle of my lower lash line. It just opens up the eye so beautifully. I'm going to just tap it on with my pinky. For mascara, I'm using the 100% Pure Fruit Pigmented Mascara in Black Tea. I don't love this mascara because it does flake, but this is just what I'm using right now. This, this is a tip I learned from Robert Welsh. So again, I'm holding a mirror kind of below my face here, and as I'm combing this through my lashes, I'm turning the brush as I pull it through my lashes. And I'm turning it away from my face. I used to just hold my brush straight and comb it up like this, but I was only using the product on like one side of the brush. This way, I'm actually using all of the mascara that's on there. And then as I'm combing it through, I also like to just wiggle it back and forth. That also just helps to coat each lash. And I think it also gives a little bit of extra volume. So I'm turning the brush and wiggling it back and forth. And while I do this, I'm trying really hard not to get any mascara on my eyelid. I actually think I was pretty successful that time. So that was coat number one. I'm gonna go in with a second coat. Just applied some Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. Kind of trying to use this up, but also I wore it yesterday and was reminded how much it helps keep my makeup in place. Like it really does make a huge difference. Not just this one for long wearing. I also like the Makeup Revolution Infinite and Sport Fix setting sprays and the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush setting spray is also really good. So those are just a few. For my lips, I like overlining my upper lip just a tiny bit. This is the Jones Road Lip Pencil in Nudist. So my upper lip is a little bit smaller than my lower lip, so I don't overline my lower lip. So to overline, I just connect my cupid's bow in the middle and then just kind of redraw it a tiny bit higher. That's really all I do. Then I make sure to blend it out. There's that, and sometimes I'll just wear that by itself. This is such a great lip liner because it's so blendable, and it also doesn't look heavy and thick on the lips. So you can just wear this by itself, and it doesn't even look like I have anything on my lips. So I totally could just leave it like that, but I'm going to top it with the Kapari Lip Glossy in Sunset Kiss. So there's my full base of makeup tips that have really helped me so much. I wish I had known these tips like four or five years ago. I think I would have liked the way I looked with makeup a lot better, but... Here we are. We live and learn. Let me know if you have any life-changing makeup tips down below that you wish someone had told you sooner. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you want more content from me, I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership where I upload an extra vlog and makeup video every month. So I'd love to have you over there as well. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll talk to you again very soon in my next video.